So let's see if we can get this here back to where it needs to be. That way we can hopefully... What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Thursday, August 31st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we need to trellis some peas. We're gonna plant some more climbing peas for the fall. But first, let's assess the little bit of damage we got from Hurricane Idalia. Now, as I told you on that last video, we weren't expected to get the brunt of Hurricane Idalia. It was projected to go a little bit east of us, and that's what happened. But as expected, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds can do a number on some corn, especially if it's kind of tall, like this heirloom blue corn was. I don't think it broke any of the stalks. If it broke some, it didn't break many. And this is already standing back up a good bit compared to what it looked like yesterday afternoon. So I'm hopeful a majority of it is gonna stand back up, maybe not completely upright again, but good enough for us to get in there and harvest this stuff. We were lucky that it didn't have a bunch of heavy ears on it already. Otherwise it might be laid down completely. And these sunflowers here that I showed you on that last video, I just knew these things were going to break off, but somehow they didn't. They took a beating and they're leaning, but they're still there. And back here in our fig orchard, most of our trees are still standing upright. A few of these on this end of the orchard got a little bit of lean to them now, but thankfully they didn't break off and they'll probably right themselves pretty soon. Now over here in our turmeric patch, I took a chance and left our shade cloth up during that hurricane and thankfully it didn't go nowhere. A few of the bungees that attach the shade cloth to our T-posts here did snap, had to replace those, but I had plenty of extras on hand. So our shade cloth is still intact. Some of those plants underneath there took a good little beating, but I think they're still alive and well. And we expected these cucumbers here to take a pretty good little beating, and they did. But those Carintos there still look okay considering the winds they had to deal with. Our pickles over here, seems that our conduit has come unattached from the post there. I think we can fix that. So let's see if we can get this here back to where it needs to be. That way we can hopefully... Jesus, uh, hit There we go. Woo! That was heavier than it looked, but now we're back in business. So besides that little bit of wind damage in some of our garden plots and having a few pecan limbs down, that was pretty much it. We got very, very lucky. I think we only got about two to three inches of rain. It was so dry around here, soaked up that water really, really fast. In fact, yesterday afternoon, after everything had passed, the boys got out here, picked up all those pecan limbs, and I was able to cut the grass without even making a mess. But as I'm sure you've seen on the news, a lot of people were not so lucky or not so fortunate, and our thoughts and prayers go out to those people dealing with the devastation from Hurricane Idalia. It was a very, very interesting hurricane compared to what we've seen in the past. Now, I'm no meteorologist, but I am a little bit of a weather nerd. Brooklyn makes fun of me how much I watch the Weather Channel when these storms are rolling in. It just fascinates me to see it all go down and watch the character of each of these storms. So what was really interesting about Hurricane Idalia compared to hurricanes we've seen in the past, it was very tightly wound. Most of the severe damage happened right around the center, but as you got away from that center, it wasn't that bad. So we live in the western part of our county, but the city of Moultrie, which is closest to us, only about 10 minutes away. They had a lot of power outages over there. It never flickered here. And then just an hour away in the city of Valdosta, they got absolutely blistered over there. So like I said, right around that center, a ton of damage. But as you got a little bit away from the center of it, it was only say 30, 40 mile an hour wind gusts around here. And if you watch the radar as Idalia was making landfall and making its way through North Florida and South Georgia, you notice that the eye wall there kind of held its structure. A lot of times, as soon as those hurricanes hit land, it kind of spreads out a little bit, but this one stayed pretty tightly wound as it made its way 
up through South Georgia. So that was completely different than say Hurricane Michael, which we experienced five or so years ago, which was a huge storm, very spread out, very widespread damage. The other thing that kind of helped us out with Idalia is we had a front moving through here. We were supposed to get some rain yesterday anyways. So there was a front moving through, which helped kind of push it a little bit. Some of these larger, more devastating hurricanes move really, really slow, and that's why they're so devastating. I think Michael moved at only around four to five miles an hour compared to Idalia, which was kicking it about 20 miles an hour. So although Idalia did its fair share of damage in, say, Valdosta, Perry, Florida, and in the Big Bend area of Florida, it wasn't near as bad as it could have been had we not had that front moving through to kind of push it along a little bit. If that thing were to slow down to, you know, five miles an hour, it could have been even worse. So we got very lucky here. We feel very fortunate. You really can't even tell anything happened here, but you don't have to drive far at all to see just absolute destruction. So now let's make the difficult segue into what we have to do out here in the garden today. We've got these Ozark Razorback peas we planted a week or two ago, and they came up pretty well considering the fact they've just been sitting in my office for a year or two. I might actually even need to thin them out a little bit, but I think I'm going to leave them for the time being. But this is a climbing cow pea variety. That's why we left this conduit up right here. And we need to give it something to climb on. So I think we're gonna do the exact same thing we did with these cucumbers. So I've got a couple pieces of rolls of this Hortanova trellis netting here. This stuff is just good to keep on hand. I like to order it in the big rolls. That way I always have some of it. Now, what we need to do here is a little bit different than those cucumbers because we have peas planted along this entire 30 foot row. So we basically need to put up three sections of it. One, 10 foot section for each 10 foot piece of conduit. So I'm gonna roll out approximately a 10 foot piece here. This stuff looks like it would be aggravating to work with, like it'd be a jumbled mess, but it's actually pretty easy to work with. So we'll cut us a 10 foot section there and we'll do it two more times. So on these ends here, we just need to pull our piece of conduit out from that elbow and then we'll just start threading this stuff on to our piece of conduit here. Pretty simple. There we go. Now we can put our conduit back in the socket. Then we'll do the same thing over on this end of the row. Just pull the conduit out, thread the Hortanova through there. And then for the center section here, we just need to unscrew one side of this conduit coupling. That way we can pull that out of there. And we can start threading this middle piece on there. And we'll put it back in there and tighten her back down. All right, so that may look a little scraggly and messy at the moment, but it has a lot to do with the fact this stuff's been rolled up for a while. As gravity does its thing and as those peas start to grab hold to the bottom there, it'll stretch out and look a lot better in the next few weeks. I wanted to do it this way. That way I don't have to take the whole conduit stretch apart. Just do it in sections, make it a lot faster and easier. And the more I use this Hortanova trellis netting like this, the more I like it. So in the past, we've just put T-posts along the row and zip tied the netting to the T-posts. Well, what can happen if whatever you're growing gets kind of heavy, it can sag in the middle there between those T-posts. Here, we don't have it tied to the T-posts, but we've got a nice support up top that it can hang from. So although we might not use this conduit set up a whole lot for heirloom tomatoes in the future, we can certainly use it for cucumbers, climbing peas, a lot of different stuff. Now over here where we're about to plant some more climbing cow peas, we obviously don't need to put up a trellis because we already have this arch trellis in place. We planted these sunflowers a while back. I wanted to give these a head start before those peas got to climbing wild on this trellis. We're getting some blooms on these, but we should get a lot more. These should make blooms all up and down the stalks there. So here we're gonna be planting some of these Tennessee purple peas from our grow out last fall. I don't know if that's the actual name of this variety, but it didn't have a name, so that's what we've been calling it. These were originally sent to us by Richard in Tennessee. Like I said, it's a climbing cow pea, really, really tasty. I think I've actually still got a couple bags left in the freezer from what we put up last year. They have a nuttier flavor than most peas or cow peas. Almost kind of tastes like a boiled peanut, which is something I really like. 
Now, as you can see here, these peas are pretty much entirely black, but they'll start out green and then as they mature, they'll turn kind of pinkish and then a beautiful purple color. That's the stage at which we harvested all the ones we ate and put in the freezer last year. But I did leave some on the plant to kind of dry, turn completely black. And so this is what we're going to be planting today. Now, I can't really make a planting furrow here because we have all these sunflower stalks in the way and we want to leave those there. So what I'm going to do instead is just take my hoe handle and just start poking me a few little holes there. The soil's kind of moist from all that rain yesterday. I want to plant these pretty thick. So I'm just gonna go in between these sunflower stalks, make me some little planting holes there, and that's where we'll drop our peas. All right, so now that we've got our holes poked there, we'll start dropping some of these pea seeds in those holes. I think I'll put a couple seeds per hole since I think I got plenty of seeds to work with here. Then I'm just gonna take my rake here and throw a little dirt in them holes there, back them down a little bit. So if this goes like I think it's gonna go, I think it's gonna look really, really nice. This Tennessee purple pea variety was a very vigorous grower for us last year. It quickly outgrew the five or six foot tall Horta Nova trellis we had for it. So assuming these germinate, I do expect them to eventually cover this entire arch panel trellis and hopefully we'll have peas hanging down all over the place. And I guess the only thing we really have to worry about here is getting an early frost in early November like we did last year. But if that is going to happen, I will put a sprinkler on a table or some kind of platform and run it all night on these babies here to save them. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that hanging Horta Nova trellis versus just tying it to T-Post. As always, don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. There might be some new stuff over there. You never know. And if you want to see an awesome bean harvest grown on this arch panel trellis, check out this video right here when we grew some climbing lima beans on it a year or two ago and just got buckets and buckets of beans. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.